Oh God. Hey, I'm Ann Jones. I host Off Track, which is the ABC's nature podcast. And today we've got some saltwater crocodile videos. I'm hoping no one gets killed. Let's watch some croc films. What's the name of this film, Ann? The, pl the Placid Lake, is that? What is it called? I don't even know. <laughs> What's it called? This film is called Lake Placid. Betty White's in it. Jeez. So the premise of this film is that we're in Maine, up in North America, beautiful spot, lots of forest, and there's a saltwater crocodile. That's your first red flag film. That is not going to happen. Saltwater crocodiles live in warm waters. Maine like freezes over in the winter. Movies are bizarre because Okay, it's the wrong species in the wrong place. There is enough dangers in the world to actually get them in the right geographical location. I don't know anyone that would, to try and study a croc would get in the water with them. That is so incredibly dangerous. And how they do it for both croc control and to do scientific monitoring is actually have sort of trap setups with baits that are closer to the edge of the water. A crocodile would be able to see him underwater because it's got a special eyelid, so it would be able to see him um, bumbling around. It's really much more likely that you will never see the croc when it's checking you out, that it will be either, you know, almost completely submerged or at a, more of a distance than you expect. Crocs can stay submerged for like three hours. Their heart slows right down. It'll be like one or two times per minute. They reckon that this crocodile is 150 years old and that's why it's so big. It's basically impossible that a crocodile would get that big or that old. Just because you're big doesn't mean you're old. Being big is part of whatever the environmental conditions that you find yourself in. So you might have a big territory with lots of fish and that means that it allows you to grow bigger. But if you're all densely packed in, in a poor environment that might be polluted, fewer fish, more competition, you're not gonna get as big. Rogue. What's that dog doing there? I still don't understand why you've got a dog on a croc tour, but okay. I'm pretty sure that's a national park as well. You can't have dogs in national parks, people. Good work. Something evil. Number one, evil is a moral term and morality is human, right? So you can't be applying that sort of stuff to nature. That croc is just doing what that croc wants to do, which is eating tourists. But on a positive side, it looks like the right habitat for a saltwater croc to be lurking. It goes without saying that that is incredibly implausible, right? There is almost no chance of a massive croc knocking a tourist boat up and spewing people out into the water. Like a boat is a huge thing compared to even the biggest croc. That boat thing, that's, look at, the boat is like, basically looks like it's got an explosive under it, which it probably did. So I think that some of those kills made it really look as if the, <laughs> the crocodile was just like going wah, 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 and eating like a whole human. That just doesn't happen. For a start, they don't have the stomach capacity to do that and it's not been documented that they do that when they attack a human. They're much more likely to bury a piece of prey and come back to it later. There's also no documentation that indicates that like there's been four human attacks in like 24 hours. They'll also go for things like turtles and fish and crabs and all sorts of stuff. Crocodile Dundee. I haven't seen this since I was a kid. She's gonna get mosquito bites on her bum. Mick, don't lurk. It's factually incorrect because it's actually impossible to look that sexy when you're in Northern Australia, because you're always like sweaty and disgusting. In some ways, it's actually fairly accurate, right? Because what would have happened is she comes down to the side of the water and she's, you know, getting a drink and the crocodile would have clocked her from quite a ways away and then dived down, approached in stealth and come up in a surprise attack. There's two things though that stand out to me that are really silly, as if that drink bottle would be able to withstand the 1500 kilograms of bite force from that crocodile. And on top of that, 
It got the drink bottle and it didn't get her. That is just not gonna happen. It'll get her every time. Don't kill the crocodile. They're protected. Don't approach the crocodile, just run away from the crocodile and definitely don't try to put a knife through the head of the crocodile. All right, stop it there. This is actually pretty cool. It's, I mean, it's a fake crocodile, but it gives you a really good demonstration of what the head looks like. And it's got these big teeth that you can see that are sort of terrifying, but some of them are actually visible and sit outside the skin. And that's one of the ways that you can tell that it's a saltwater crocodile. And the way that their jaws work, the teeth actually have, you know, little indentations so that when the jaws close, it all fits together really beautifully. It's really well engineered. One thing I noticed in all of these movies was that when the crocodile actually attacked, it made a roaring sound. Roar! And I don't know if that's really realistic. Uh, I've never been attacked by a crocodile. So if you have or you've seen a crocodile taking prey and know what type of sound it makes, please comment below and if you've got a recording, email it to me. I really want to hear it.